Many animals um, have a migratory pattern each year. The behavioural aspect of that is pretty well described. But how they know where they're going and can get directional information out of their environment is less well understood. But what is now known is that these animals can sense the Earth's magnetic field. This is interesting on its own terms, but it's also important from an ecological point of view that, that we understand this, because there are certain human activities that can adversely impact their ability to use this magnetic sense. And their migration patterns are very important about their well-being. So the better we understand this, the better we'll be able to limit the, the adverse impact of human activities on their migration. But I also work for a measurement institute, so why am I interested? Well, it transpires that this is a particularly sensitive sense of a very weak magnetic field. And there are a wide range of areas where such a sensitive sense would be really useful. So it transpires that the way this works is that the, these animals have an innate quantum sensor for a magnetic field. And it's all about a property known as quantum mechanical spin. Now, fundamental particles like the electron have this property, this spin property. But they're also negatively charged. So what they are is the spinning charge, a moving charge, if you like. An all moving charge generates a magnetic field. So if you have a, electrons being conducted down a wire, that will generate a magnetic field. It's how electromagnets work. So what happens in these animals is that there's a sensory protein, which is a large molecule that's kind of uh, a molecular machine, if you like, in each cell. And this protein is called cryptochrome. And when cryptochrome is activated, it can do several things. But one of those things is it can modulate the activity or the firing of neurons. Now, the way you activate cryptochrome is that you trigger a transfer of an electron within the protein. So it's almost like a molecular wire, if you like. And because those transferring electrons are magnetic because of the spin, they can be influenced by an external magnetic field. And this is the basis of this magnetic sensing within cryptochrome because a magnetic field from the Earth can affect those transferring electrons and change the amount of activated cryptochrome there is in the cell. So what can we do with this knowledge about animal magnetoreception? Well, one of the things we can do is that we can build on the fact that this is um, an evolved quantum sensor, really sensitive for very weak magnetic fields. And that has a lot of practical uh, implications for, for healthcare applications. For example, when a neuron fires, um, it generates a magnetic field. But if that is a, an, in an unhealthy nervous system, the firing of the neuron might be different and the magnetic field associated with it might be different. So if we can engineer quantum mechanical magnetic sensors from this protein, and introduce them into nerve cells, we have the potential of measuring this sort of aberrant neuronal activity. And there are other things that are, that are possible. So for example, certain biomarkers are free radicals, and free radicals have unpaired electrons with their associated magnetic field. There's also reactive oxygen species, and these, all of these can generate oxidative stress and cause things like cancer. So if we can have molecular devices that we can engineer, put into cells, and detect in a very sensitive way these biomarkers for disease, then that's quite exciting. So what we've found out recently in the context of animal magnetoreception is not only how this cryptochrome molecule senses a magnetic field, but how it interacts with other parts of the cell in order to send a magnetic signal. Right? And this was a really exciting finding, but that wouldn't have been possible if only one group of scientists with a particular expertise were working in isolation. This takes a whole interdisciplinary team, 
And our team ranges from behavioral biologists on the one hand to quantum scientists on the other. And in between, we have geneticists who are able to um, alter the genetic makeup of the model organisms that we use in order to study different parts of the cell. We need neurobiologists that can measure the, act the neuronal activity that is modulated by these magnetic fields. And we've got people who understand the molecular side. So they understand how the protein works and how that um, molecular wire, if you like, functions. And then the quantum scientists are able to describe, often with computational techniques, how the spin evolves and how that's linked through the whole system right back down to the biology. So what this is, is an example of a biological quantum sensor for magnetic fields. And this is really important at the moment because the UK government's national quantum strategy has five missions, one of which is quantum sensing for healthcare. So if we can piggyback, if you like, off what nature does and how nature will detect these, um, these magnetic fields within a biological system, then we, then we have a head start, okay? So that's what we're working towards here at MPL. So looking forward, the potential for this technology is not just limited to sensing. So there is the potential for something that's called magnetic stimulation. Now, one of the big challenges in biological measurement is that biological systems are very, very noisy. So you have a bit of it that you're interested in, but there's all sorts of other stuff going on at the same time. And the question always arises, am I looking at the right thing? But if you, in a targeted way, can stimulate the system of interest, then you start to have greater confidence that what you're measuring is correct. So there is already technology being developed for this. You can use light to stimulate a target system. You can switch on a gene or you can stimulate the activity of a neuron. But the problem with light, with um, large biological systems like humans, is that light doesn't penetrate very deeply into humans but magnetic fields do. So if, if we can engineer versions of cryptochrome and put them deep inside a human body and then use magnetic fields that are very low in energy, interact with very little and can penetrate very deeply into the tissue, this could be potentially very powerful. It works brilliantly in magnetic resonance imaging, but instead of imaging, in this case, we will be stimulated. And looking even further on, and this is starting to become a bit speculative, but it's exciting to look into the future in this way, we could potentially build on that. And if there is a cell type that isn't functioning properly, could we put engineered versions of this protein in there as a gene or cell therapy to enable magnetic fields to stimulate their function and perhaps correct whatever is wrong with it?